Hey everybody, welcome to the 20 Minute Bible Study. I am Vince Miller. Today we're discussing the topic of preparing for marriage. You know, between the days of your proposal and the actual wedding day, there's a tremendous opportunity for a man to prepare for a life together with his new bride. While a lot of time and energy and money will be spent on the event, marriage is much more than a single event in time. It's a lifetime of commitment that requires some preparation. Many husbands never take time for sober reflection on what their fiance will be like, not only as a friend that they love, but a spouse that they will live with forever. <laughs> Life will be hectic during this engagement and it will be tempting to spend most of it trying to just get to and beyond that wedding event. But as a man who will soon bear a new title, husband, and eventually the title father, it's essential for you to plan beyond the wedding day. So here are four areas where you can make some preparations. Number one, we should prepare relationally. You know, often in the first blush of a relationship, it's common for us to only think about, well, all the things that we have in common with our bride-to-be. And it's almost predictable that shortly into the marriage that you will be thinking, wow, we are really different from one another. Now, how do I negotiate this strange person I'm living with? You know, your engagement is a great time to become aware of these issues. Observing her moods, her patterns of conflict, her unspoken values, her aspirations for the future, and the nuances of her personality that actually stem from her family of origin. Remember, the goal is relational oneness. Two, we should prepare spiritually. You know, as a Christ follower, there are three people linked in your marriage. You, your wife, and God. A spiritual connection is by far the most critical factor in a healthy, enduring, and happy marriage because marriage is a spiritual institution developed and instituted by God, not us. And while most Christian couples assume the spiritual nature of their marriage, establishing spiritual practices now before marriage is vital to spiritual vitality in marriage. So begin creating simple spiritual practices today before you're ever married, rather than waiting for marriage. Prayer, study, and church attendance are all great practices that will prepare you both spiritually and emotionally for marriage. Three, we should prepare physically. You know, when it comes to things like sex, for example, God is explicit. Sex is an act of such high order that it's reserved for a marriage with one woman wrapped in a commitment, lifelong commitment. How well you preserve and care for your physical relationship now before marriage is often determined, will often determine how well you will maintain your purity even in your marriage. Before marriage, it's important to discuss this set boundaries, or reset them if you need to. Your wife-to-be will respect you for it. More importantly, God will bless you for your obedience, and you will set a precedent for sexual wholeness, purity, and fidelity in your marriage. And four, we should prepare emotionally. You know, often this is a challenging one as it requires growing levels of transparency for us as men. While this doesn't seem to come naturally for us, we need to learn, and the operative word here is learn, to be fully transparent with your fiance about who you are, the struggles you have, and the issues you desire to overcome. In other words, emotional connection infers that we hide nothing from one another. Agree with your spouse to be that neither of you will hide the truth of their lives from the other. Be candid about your feelings, your emotions, your joys, and your struggles. So guys, when we return, we will be joined by a guest who will help us to dive into this topic a little bit more. Get your day started right. Sign up for the Men's Daily Devotional at mensdevo.org. That's mensdevo.org. They're short, sweet, and to the point. Read them and share them with the men you know. And get into God's Word daily. So guys, welcome back to the show. I am joined today by Elliot Angan. Thanks for being with us, bud. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, good to have you here. So we you know we're talking about preparing for marriage. You're probably gonna be thinking about marriage in the future, right? I am, yeah. Yeah, he's actually dating my daughter, believe it or not. <laughs> so <laughs> you might be thinking about this topic. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I actually think it's super important to think about marriage, you know, and just to think toward the future about things. And I think sometimes that 
you know, like we talked about in the monologue that we think about the wedding day, but we don't think about what happens after the wedding day and kind of prepare for that. And really, I think that time when we propose to the time of the, the day that we actually get married, that there's some important things that we have to be thinking about, um, whether it's emotionally, relationally, physically, spiritually, that we're thinking about, they're going to help us to prepare for those moments. I'm kind of wondering, uh, from a little bit of your history, you, your mom and dad have been married for how many years? Oh, 22. 22. Exactly. That's right. And they've modeled a good marriage for you, they have, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I think a really healthy one for that matter. Um, what kinds of good lessons have you learned from watching their marriage that you would love to see applied to your own? Well, that's the thing is uh, they've been together for so long. They know so much about each other. And it's, it's truly a relationship that's so healthy and where I can see when one of them is having a bad day, the other one is there to pick them up. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I definitely want to take into my relationships. Um, uh, not only with a future spouse, but with friends. And mm -hmm. they, they really take that out into the world and they, they live by it. And it's, it's very, very faith-based as well. Yeah. So, so I, have, I have often been sobered by this fact, and I want to just mention it to you because I think it's a reality that we face, but 50% of all marriages, Christian or not, end in divorce. Uh, why do you think that's sobering? Oh, well, it's a scary stat. Yeah. You and I both know that. But yeah. it's sobering in that... Um, it's it's a sad reality that we have to face and we need to realize that before we go into a relationship and that um marriage is it's difficult it's not going to be easy yeah. we've heard that yeah. obviously yeah. i i haven't lived through it like yeah. you right. or my parents have but yeah. um it's something that you have to take into consideration before making that final decision and i think sometimes being able to um realize that waters will get yeah. choppy and yeah. Being able to kind of live through that and recognizing that it's not all going to be fun and games is definitely something that you have to think about. Yeah, I, you know, I think that sometimes when people approach marriage and I've done some premarital counseling with people and talk with people about it, that they think that 50 percent doesn't apply to them. You right, know, they right. think there's no chance yeah, that we would ever yeah. get divorced. This will never happen to us that we're permanently committed to each other, everything's gonna be fine. But in reality, uh, that is a fact that's true for all people, regardless of how good they are or not. And I think that's what really sobers me about that fact is it can happen to anybody. Um, I'm grateful that uh, me and my wife have been married just like your parents for you know 22 great years, some yeah. ups, some downs, but it's been awesome. And uh, I'm grateful that we've been committed to each other, but we also know that every day that that marriage is under attack, whether it be by the enemy, by the world, by issues that arise in our marriage. And so we're always very tenacious about that. So uh, next question really is related to um, uh, the, the whole idea of this proposition of this emotional and relational and physical and spiritual oneness. like. When you think about marriage someday, maybe of someone that you know, maybe my daughter, yeah, like, right. I mean, what do you, th where do you think you need to do the most preparation? I think which a, of those areas? A lot of it has to do with the emotional. Um, I've been someone who typically doesn't like to talk a whole lot about my shortcomings. Mm -hmm. And I think that being able to open up with your significant other, that's really, really important. Being able to re recognize things that you need to work on mm -hmm. and be able to communicate really, really well. Communication is a, definitely a key aspect. Yeah. And I think a lot of th that has to do with your willingness to be able to say, okay, th these are things that I need your help with. Yeah. And these are areas where I can help you. It's it's definitely a trade-off. And um, knowing that you need to, you need to be connected to God as well. There are times when there's just certain, I mean, we, we look about, yeah. about a month ago with the car accident. Right. That was a situation where as, as cruddy as it was, we needed to use each other as a rock, as a source of strength yeah, to they, get through that. Just a, in the very recent past, you guys were involved in a car accident and it brings out, those, those situations bring out something in each of you that show a deeper side when you face a challenge together, right? And so I think we underestimate the power of our emotions, kind of like you're talking about, but even the fact that you just took a second to think about the future and what that would look like in the confines of a commitment forever to one another, it helps you to kind of mentally prepare, right? Oh, for sure. And so we, I believe don't take the time to really even think about those things until we're thrust into those situations. So uh, I want to read a verse here that I think is 
pretty powerful and it's pretty significant. It's from the Old Testament. It's Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And it says this, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast or cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Now we focus a lot on this kind of idea of one fleshness, but uh, is there anything that stands out to you about that verse? I mean, this is God giving a oneness command to a man and a woman. But is there anything special that stands out to you about that verse? Yeah, I think the the aspect of leaving my mother, mother and father. You know, that's that's something that it, it's completely foreign to me at right now. It's yeah. when I'm in a pickle, I'm calling mom or I'm calling dad. Right. And someday it's going to be in the very near future. Um, I'm calling my spouse, right. and that's the person that I'm going to go to in times of need, times of trouble, and yeah. um, kind of leaving the nest a little bit. So yeah. that's definitely something that stands out to me, and I'm looking forward to it. But it's also kind of scary. It's it's a whole new, it's uncharted territory. So yeah. yeah, exactly. It's I think this whole idea of leaving and cleaving, or leaving and holding fast, is you're kind of leaving an old way and old patterns behind, right? It's right. kind of the old way of doing things now you're forging a new way of doing something. And so it is, it's pretty tenacious and it requires new ways of thinking, yeah. new mindsets, embracing new systems and new relationships, right? And so, and clearly this whole idea of becoming one flesh is almost to lose not only your old family, but to lose your own identity yeah. in the process to form something new between the two of you. And you, you while you're kind of thrust into it, after the marriage day, we shouldn't be thrust into it by not being prepared, right? We got to be preparing our minds to think that, yeah, we're leaving old ways and we're going to embrace new, but what does it look like to forge out this new system, this new way of doing life together that's going to be independent also from your mother and father's way, or perhaps my daughter's father and mother's way, right? My way. Yep. And I've got to be comfortable with that too, oh, right? Sure. And I've got to go, okay, now it's for them to figure out their way of life, how they're going to do it. And my hopes is that my daughter is prepared and that you're prepared if that day ever comes to kind of think about, okay, what do we look like in this union? What does our life together look like? So, um, you know, as, as you think about uh, some of these challenges that you face and kind of what God is saying, what do you think God might be saying to you today, even as we discuss the topic? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. I, I think that a lot of it, kind of going back to your previous point, is that forging of a new, it's almost a new entity in, in and of itself. You're, you're no longer part of that prior family that I had, nor is she completely a part of what you and Christina have done. And it's it's kind of a forging of both, kind of this this mending of one parenting style and another. And that's that's something that definitely needs to be taken into account. And I'm looking forward to it yeah. when, if, when and if that day ever comes. But yeah, yeah it's gonna be really uh, interesting. So. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be an interesting opportunity, but it'll also be a great opportunity for you sure. to explore kind of life together. Now, it also is weird for me because we're sitting here talking about this because I'm the father on the other side of the thing, but I'm thinking about it in regards to what I need to let go of too, even how I engage, how I parent my daughter very differently now that she has left. You know, I'm thinking about the other side of the equation and it's how, how do I carefully engage? What, what advice do I give? How do I insert myself? Because I know that some parents might overdo that right, a little right. bit or even underdo it, right? You can yeah, underdo it yeah. too much too. Um, or even how my daughter might, after she gets married, uh, engage back with me and how I encourage her to, you know, talk with her spouse about sure. what that looks like. And so, and to forge new patterns and new ways that are separate from us. So, you know, as I, when I got married, I thought about many of the same things that probably you are but probably did a lot less preparation for all those things. Okay. And so uh, my hope is that you will even do better than I did and that you are thoughtful and you kind of think about it and take some steps towards preparation. So as you kind of think about, think about that, are there any particular issues that you think you need to address with faith now that you think would be important? Oh, I'm trying to think of some really... That's a tough question because it takes a lot of self-reflecting. Yeah. And with myself, I, I see a lot of uh, letting go of the old habits. Yeah. Um, 
there, there are times where you're not going to be able to do whatever it is you want to do in that right. particular moment. You need to be somewhere else to help your spouse. Yeah. You, you're not, you're not independent anymore right. fully. Yeah. Um, and that's something that definitely I, I need to get used to. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's the one off the yeah. top of my head that I can think of. That was, so when my wife and I got married, Christina and I, I, I suddenly realized that there were parts of my life that weren't my own anymore. And that's where that oneness right. comes in, right? That we are now a new entity. I'm no longer, it's not just Vince and Christina. It's a new entity altogether. Now me making sacrifices for her, her making sacrifices for me, us readjusting our relationships and our lifestyle patterns and the choices that we make even together. And uh, I'd say it was pretty awkward in the first year. It wasn't. I mean, I think we faced a lot of challenges, but I faced all kinds of issues that I wasn't really ready for in those first moments. And I was like, man, I really am a selfish person, right? right? right. <laughs> Remarkably selfish, but uh, it's, it's suddenly surprise. It's very surprising, but what I really enjoyed about it was it has made me into a better man along the way. And I've become a greater husband, father, and leader specifically by allowing myself to subject myself to a new, uh, idea for marriage. See, that that's really, that unity too, that, right. that Genesis is talking right. about. And it's funny that you bring that up. Cause even today, like right now we're supposed to be looking at a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> I didn't let her know that this was going on. And I, I it's so selfish of me. I was like, right. Oh my gosh, she's going to look at a Wrangler all by herself. Oh, I right. hope, hope everything's well, doing Well, you better right. get out there. And <laughs> that's what I'm saying. But it's just, I just think that's, that's ironic yeah. that you say that. And there's yeah. definitely instances that I can still yeah. point to, or I, yeah. I'm falling short. Yeah. So there you in preparation yeah. for marriage, yeah. that would definitely be something yeah. to, to reflect on. Well, Elliot, thanks for being with us Thank today. I so much. appreciate it. Guys, uh, I hope you take something out of this time today, whether or not it's having conversations with your future son-in-law, maybe, <laughs> or just getting to know yourself and identifying issues that you have in yourself. Do something. Um, I believe preparing for marriage is something very important that we take for granted. And it's not just about preparing for a wedding day. It's about preparing for a life together that God has unique, uniquely brought you together in. So thanks for being with us. We'll see you back here next time.